Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about the prototyping life cycle model. Now this life cycle model has a main goal which is to reduce risk and uncertainty in development. Its purpose is to ensure that all the major stakeholders, that's the developer, the user and the customer all have, uh, all come to a common agreement as to um, what is, what is uh, proposed as the requirements and what is needed in the design in order to actually make this thing. Okay, so here, here's a look at um, what the model looks like and this model actually allows all of part which is reconstructed quickly or understand or clarify the issues and therefore has the same objective as an engineering prototype where the requirements of design require repeated investigation to ensure that everybody comes to a common understanding. Um, so as you can see, uh, a lot of times you could start off in prototyping, say, the requirements. You don't have to just prototype um, the actual code itself. The prototype model is more gener general than that. It allows you to prototype the requirements. I keep going back to the user and customer to figure out, okay, is this what you want? And then sometimes you would move on to the design phase where you would build a couple um, different, well, you would propose different architectures and that kind of thing um, so the engineers kind of come to a common understanding and keep revising that over and over. It is not uncommon to actually drop back to the prototype requirement stage when we realize that um, some of the, some of the, we might run into issues and that kind of thing and will require us to keep going back to actually clarify um, things and actually because, because our understanding of the system actually evolves as we build it and everybody actually is coming to this common understanding. That is the prototyping um, model in general. So that brings us to evolutionary, to two types of prototyping. They are called evolutionary and throwaway. So first starting with evolutionary prototyping, um, that's a life cycle model in which you develop a system concept after you move through the project. Um, usually you begin by developing the most vi visible aspects of your system. So you demonstrate that, that part of the system that part of the system to the customer and then continue to develop the prototype based on the feedback that you receive. Um, at some point you and the customer agree that the prototype is well good enough and at that point you complete any remaining work in the system and release the prototype as the final product. Um, evolutionary prototyping is specific especially useful when your requirements are changing rapidly when your customer is very reluctant to commit to a set of requirements or when neither of you um, neither sorry you nor your customer understands the application area very well uh, it is also useful when the developers are unsure of the optimal architecture or which algorithms they actually want to use <coughs> so it actually produces steady and visible signs of progress, which can be especially useful when there is a strong demand for development speed. The main drawback of this kind of prototyping is that it is impossible to know at the outset of the project how long it will take to create an acceptable product. You don't even know how many iterations you'll have to go through. The drawback is mitigated somewhat by the fact that customers can see steady signs of product, uh, progress and um, they therefore tend to be less nervous about eventually getting a product than with some other approaches. It is also possible to use evolutionary prototyping within a we'll just keep prototyping until we run out of time or money and then we'll declare ourselves to be done kind of framework. Another drawback is that this approach can easily become an excuse to do code and fix development. Um, real evolutionary prototyping includes uh, real requirements analysis, real design, and real maintainable code, just in much smaller increments than you'd find with the other traditional approaches. So that brings me to throwaway prototyping. With throwaway prototyping, um, code is developed to explore factors critical to the system's success, and then that code is thrown away. The prototyping implementation uses programming languages or development practices, or both, um, that are much faster than the target language and practices. The user interface is prototyped far more commonly than any other part of the system, but other parts of some systems can benefit, also benefit from being prototyped. Um, when using, when used as a requirement specification aid, the throwaway prototyping practice can um, accelerate projects based on traditional lifecycle models. Um, it can initiate it, it can be initiated at either management or technical level. 
um, when we get to talking about design design paradigms and modern design practices um, I'll show you how uh, nowadays they use what they call wireframing tools like bal balsamic um, to actually accomplish these kinds of user interface prototyping that is used in a throwaway prototyping type methodology um, but uh, let, let's talk a little bit more about throwaway prototyping before we get there. So you can employ throwaway prototyping at any type, at any time in a project to clarify requirements and decide, um, say, an architectural issue, or compare design or implementation options, or even test a performance optimization. Um, throwaway prototyping is usually successful. Nonetheless, you should address several risks when planning a project that will use it. The risks include keeping said throwaway prototype, uh, inefficient use of prototyping time, and an unrealistic schedule and budget expectations. Okay, I'm going to go through that one at a time. Um, so first, let me address keeping a throwaway prototype. Uh, one of the key problems in developing a throwaway prototype is the prototype might not get thrown away. Right? Managers often decide that after the prototype has been developed that it will be it will cost too much to redo the system and insist on evolving the prototype into the final product, kind of like evolutionary prototyping. So midway through the process, somebody just says, well, okay, let's, let's, let's do, it, do this the evolutionary way instead. We, we spend much time. Avoid that trap, right? Delivering a throwaway can result in poor design and poor maintainability and poor performance. If you plan on devel to develop a throwaway prototype, be sure that managers and technical staff would commit to throwing it away. Uh, be sure that everybody understands that you are creating a creating disposable software that isn't re robust enough to be put into production or strong enough to serve as a foundation for the final product. You are not creating real software when you're doing throwaway prototyping. If you think that you might evolve the prototype rather than throw it away, uh, plan from the outset to use an evolutionary approach so that the prototype's design and implementation will f will support full development. As for the objection that throwing away the prototype costs too much, done right, the reason you create a throwaway prototype is that it is cheaper to tr develop a throwaway prototype, learn lessons the cheap way, and then implement the real code with fewer mistakes uh, than it is not to create the throwaway prototype in the first place. If you think of some other method that will uh, be more cost effective in a specific um, situation, use that instead. Otherwise, far from creating extra cost, throwaway prototyping is the most cost-effective practice available. Um, the next problem is inefficient use of prototyping time. So as with evolutionary prototyping, um, projects often waste time during throwaway prototyping and unnecessarily lengthen the development schedule. Uh, although prototyping is by nature an exploratory process, that does not mean that it has to be an open-ended process. Uh, you have to monitor prototyping activities very carefully. So if you're doing throwaway prototyping, you have to treat each throwaway prototype as an experiment. You first start with develop, developing a hypothesis. So for example, um, a disk-based merge sort will sort 10,000 records in less than 30 seconds. So we're going to have to test that hypothesis. And then be sure that the prototyping activity stays focused on pro proving or disproving that hypothesis. Don't let it stray off into related areas and make sure that the prototyping stops as soon as the hypothesis has been proved or disproved. Okay, and the last thing you want to mitigate against is unrealistic schedule and budget expectations. So as with other kinds of prototyping, when users, managers, marketers see rapid pro progress on a prototype, they sometimes make unrealistic assumptions about how quickly the final product can be developed. The, um, Time required to move from a throwaway prototype implementation uh, to implementation in the target language is sometimes uh, grossly underestimated. The best way to combat such a risk is to estimate the development of the prototype and the development of the final product as separate projects. Okay? So the last thing you want to consider is whether you should uh, use throwaway or evolve. So both evolutionary and throwaway prototypes are evolved in response to changes in the feature set or user interface design. You'll generally want to keep the prototype flexible so that you can refine it in response to user feedback. Um, once you've explored the system's functionality with the users, the prototype can uh, serve as a live requirement spec for the visible aspects of the program. At some point, you begin beginning, begin building 
the real system and at that point you either throw away the user interface prototype and begin building the real system and or you begin evolving the user interface prototype into production code the first decision you make um, is whether to build a throwaway prototype or one that you'll eventually evolve into production code that's an evolutionary prototype you need to make a decision at the time you begin building the prototype and not at the time you begin building the real system one rule of thumb is if you know a lot about requirements and have relatively relatively few conflicts about priorities and trade-offs use the evolutionary prototyping approach otherwise there'll be too many changes in which case you should use the um throwaway prototyping approach to explore requirements and user interface designs another guideline is that on small systems evolutionary prototyping is preferable because the overhead of creating a throwaway prototype makes it economically undesirable on medium and large scale systems you can use either throwaway prototyping or evolutionary prototyping successfully you can also prototype the main system using evolutionary prototyping and prototype only the riskiest parts with the throwaway prototyping before beginning full-scale development on those parts okay and that brings me to the end of my discussion on prototyping so tune in to the next video where we're going to start talking about phased um, development practices okay